Chag Sameach, everyone. Happy Passover. I want to take a minute before we start the Seder to acknowledge what we're missing this year. I know some of us are coming to the Seder table with heavy hearts. We're missing people that we love. We may be missing the person who usually leads the Seder or people who prepare a special food for our families. And that's really hard. But I think we should also, before we start, give ourselves a yasher koach, a well done, for making the Seder happen this year, for finding the strength despite everything that's going on to make sure that we carry on this tradition, Lador Vador. The Seder starts with Kiddush, with blessing the first cup of wine. So if you're following along at home, take a minute to pause and pour wine for one another if there's someone available to do that for you. The tradition is to pour for someone else. Uh, you shouldn't have to pour for yourself because we are free people tonight. All right. Uh, in the Kiddush, we say Chagim Uzmanim Lesasson, the seasons of our joy. And we also call this holiday Zman Cherutenu, the time of our freedom. So before I say Kiddush, hit pause and think about the ways or talk about the ways that you have known joy and freedom this year. Welcome back. The first cup of wine. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Borei pri ha'gafen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher bachar banu mikol am Romamanu mikol ashon the kitchen who be mitz for tav. Vati ten lanu adonai eloheinu. Beahava. Moadim le simcha. Chagim uzmanim le sason. Ed yom. Chag hamatzot hazeh. Zman cheruteinu. Mikra kodesh. Zecher litziat mitzrayim. Ki banu vacharta veotanu kitashta. Mikol hamim umoede kod shecha besim chavasoson hin chaltanu baruch ata adonai mikadesh Yisrael vehazmani. And we recline and take that first sip. All right. Next on the agenda is Urchatz. We do a traditional hand washing, but without the bracha. So I'm going to go in the kitchen. I'll be right back. Okay. You pick up your parse. You pick up your parsley. Adi, where's the parsley? Yeah, Tom Thumb was out of parsley. Got your potatoes. Potatoes? You know, it's funny that you got me potatoes because many Ashkenazim have a tradition of having a potato instead of parsley. The reason is their families come from places that when the Seder fell in the spring, there might still be snow on the ground and green things had yet to sprout. So they had to be flexible. They had to go with the flow and they would use a potato in place of parsley if there was none available. So, as we have been adapting in this time of COVID-19, perhaps we didn't find all of the foods we wanted for Passover, we're actually echoing the footsteps of some of our ancestors. Well, whatever karpas, vegetable, uh, parsley you have on hand, please take it up and uh, we're going to get ready to do our first dipping in the salt water, and we'll say the bracha. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu 
Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaAdama. Mm, not my favorite uh, new tradition. Let's go back to parsley next year. We've come to Yachatz, the breaking of the middle matzah. We spend the holiday getting rid of a food called chametz in our preparations for the holiday, and then we eat a food called matzah during the holiday. And I want you to envision these words in your head because they're very similar. They share most of the same letters. Chametz is chet, mem, tzadi, and matzah is mem, tzadi, hey. So they have the mem and the tzadi in common, and the only difference between them is the he and the chet. Now, the chet and the he look similar visually. The only difference is there's a small break in the he. And so there is a, te a teaching of the Likutei um, Mo'aran, a Hasidic master, and he says, we have to take the letter chet in chametz and break it a little to turn it into the he that belongs in the word matzah. And when we can break that chet, we let all the fermentation, all the sourness of our souls go out, leaving pure and holy matzah. So perhaps some of the symbolism in yachatz is to be letting go of chametz, to break the chet in ourself, which also sounds a lot like the word for sin, and turn it into the hay for the word matzah. All right, we're gonna get that middle matzah, and we're gonna give it a break. Okay, now, this matzah needs to be with me at the end of the meal for tzafun, for the part of the seder where we have to take a little bite of matzah at the end of the meal. So I'm just going to put it here for safekeeping. No one should move it. We've come also to the part of the Seder that is Ha Lachmaanya Diachalu Abahatana Baarya de Mitzrayim. Kol Dichthin Yete ve Yechul. Kol Ditzrich Yete ve Yipsach. Hashta Hacha Lashana Haba Aba Arya de Yisrael. Hashta Avde Lashana Haba Av Ne Chorin. We uh, have this bread of affliction. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Our forefathers ate it in the land of Egypt. This year we are uh, in the land of slavery. Next year may we be in the land of Israel. Now we are slaves. Next year may we be free. Ha-lachma-anya, come and eat the bread of affliction, does not sound like a very nice invitation. Sure, come over for dinner. I'll make you some bread of affliction. Why is it that we say, let everyone who's hungry come and eat something that's not particularly wonderful food? And Rabbi Jonathan Sachs' teaching on it is, the first act of a free person is to be able to share food, no matter how modest the food. See, slaves are always worried about where their next meal will come from, and they're enslaved emotionally too. They have no bandwidth to be able to um, share their resources. And so, halach ma'anya, come and eat the bread of affliction, is our first sign that we are free people. We've come to the four questions. Ma nishtana halayla haza miko
שבחול הלילות אנו אוכלים חמץ ומצה, חמץ ומצה. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, כולו מצה. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, כולו מצה. שבכל הלילות אנו אוכלים שאי ירקות, שאי ירקות. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, מרור, מרור. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, מרור, מרור. שבכל הלילות אין אנו מטבילים אפילו פעם אחת, אפילו פעם אחת. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, שתי פעמים. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, שתי פעמים, שבכל הלילות אנו אוכלים בין יושבין ובין מסובין, בין יושבין ובין מסובין. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, כולנו מסובין. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, כולנו מסובים. Why is this night different than all other nights? On all other nights we eat either leavened or unleavened bread. Why on this night only matzah? On all other nights we eat all sorts of vegetables, but on this night we eat bitter herbs. On all other nights, we do not dip even once. Okay, maybe if you're Texan, you have guac and queso. But on all other nights, we do not dip even once, and tonight we dip twice. On all other nights, we eat sitting upright or reclining. Why tonight do we recline? I come to Avadim Hayinu, page 9. I heard a story from Mike Precker about a man who was scheduled to run the Barcelona Marathon, which was canceled due to COVID-19. The man lived in Paris, and he lived in an apartment that had a balcony. On the day of the race, he went on his balcony and ran back and forth 26.2 miles. That is determination. You see, Avadim Hainu means we were slaves. Le Pharaoh b'Mitzrayim to Pharaoh in Egypt. The Yotzeinu Hashem Elokeinu Misham the Yad Chazaka b'Zroa Netuya, and God came and rescued us with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. This man was imprisoned by the disease that's keeping us all sheltering in place. Physically, he could not go run a marathon, but in his mind, emotionally and spiritually, he felt free. And he said, I am going to find a way to run that marathon, darn it. So when we sing Avadim Hayinu, one thing to contemplate and intention we can have is in what ways are we finding ourselves able to free our spirits and free our minds, though we may be somewhat restricted physically at the moment? Avadim hainu, hainu. Avadim hainu, lefaroba mitzrayim. Avadim hainu. Lefaro v'mitzrayim 
Once we were the slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Eternal, our God, brought us out from there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. If the Holy One, praised be God, had not brought our ancestors from Egypt, then even we, our children and our children's children, might still have been enslaved to Pharaoh in Egypt. Therefore, even were we all sages, all people of understanding, all elders, all well-versed in the Torah, it would be our duty to tell the story of the departure from Egypt. And all who tell of the departure from Egypt, the more and more they do so, are to be praised. We have come to the four children. The wise child, the wicked child, the simple child, and the child who doesn't know how to ask. The wise child, upon waking, looks at several websites, checks all news on social media, reads a couple of newspapers, and then has breakfast. The wise child is someone who needs to know everything about the situation. My question to you is, how is it helping you in this moment in time to be the wise child? The wicked child says, why is this situation happening to me? And takes it very personally that the world is upside down right now and does not accept his or her fate as being something universal, but rather feels it's particular. How is it helpful to you to be the wicked child in this moment? The simple child says, something terrible is happening. I don't understand why, but I want to know how I can help. And the child who does not yet know how to ask simply needs to be comforted with lullabies and hugs cups of tea and matzo ball soup. In what way does it help you right now to be the simple child or the child who does not know how to ask? In the next part of our Seder, on page 12, we read, V'hi sh'amda l'avotenu l'imotenu v'lanu in every generation, something rises up against us, not just our ancestors in Egypt, but many times over, the Jews have found themselves in trying circumstances on Passover night. And yet, they have been able to confront what is challenging them. So take a minute to ask yourself what is challenging you the most right now? What is your personal Pharaoh, your personal Egypt? And how will you resist and rise up against it? We've come to Dayenu on page 13. Dayenu is a song all about kindness that God has bestowed on the Jewish people. And just one of these kindnesses would have been enough, Dayenu, enough for us. So as we're singing, think about all the kindness that you've experienced during this time and how that would have been enough to sustain you, and yet more kindness came along. Ilu hotzi hotzi anu hotzi anu mi mitzrayim hotzi anu mi mitzrayim dayenu day dayenu day dayenu day dayenu 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 Ilu hotzi anu mi mitzrayim velo karalanu etayam dayenu day dayenu day dayenu Dai, 
Die, die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, a new. Die, a new. Ilu he echilanu et aman, velo natan lanu et a shabbat. Die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, a new. Die, a new. Ilu natan lanu et a shabbat, velo caravanu lipne har sinai. Die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, new, die, new. We come to the part of the Seder on page 14 where we remove a drop of wine from our cup for each of the plagues. The tradition says that we cannot be fully joyful in our own freedom because it meant the suffering of the Egyptians. So, Maybe this could be cathartic this year. Take a minute before you take drops out of your cup to ask yourself, how have I been plagued? What would I like to get rid of this year? And just let it out there on your plate. Tham, blood, Savaldea, frog, Kinim, vermin, arov, beasts, daver, cattle disease, shrin, boils, parad, hell, arbe, locusts, choshech, darkness, Makat Bechorot, the slaying of the firstborn. On page 15, we're told that there are three major symbols in the Haggadah. And if you can't do anything else, if you have to minimize the Seder, at least try to have these three symbols present. The first is the Passover offering. Our ancestors at the first Seder slaughtered a lamb in God's honor and then took the blood of the ram and painted their door frames. A friend of mine who's a rabbi said, it was a message to their neighbors, was it not? To paint the door frames with blood. What message would we like to send our neighbors this year, if you could write something on your doorframe to share with your neighbors in this season of joy and season of freedom, what would you say to them? The next thing that we must absolutely have is the matzah. Matzah is the simplest form of bread that one can make. It's just flour and water. Other times we add yeast or salt or eggs or oil, or sugar, but we don't enrich matzah. Matzah comes to remind us what is core, what is key, what is basic and necessary. And perhaps one of the gifts of experiencing this pandemic is to be able to ask ourselves, what really matters to me? What is my matzah? What is just my flour and water that cannot be taken away, that I value highly? And finally, we come to the bitter herbs. I don't think there's much to drosh about the bitter herbs this year, so I will simply offer a blessing that may bitter turn to sweet speedily and in our days. The next part of the Seder, page 16, says, Bechol dor vador chayav adam nerot et atzmo ki ilu hu yatsa mi mitzrayim. In every generation, one must look upon himself or herself as having personally come out of Egypt. And then it tells us in each generation we must tell this story. Our ancestors 
have been telling the story of Passover since biblical times. The Haggadah is actually built in several literary layers, and there are pieces of it that come directly from the Bible. Other pieces, the majority of it, come from the time of the Mishnah and the Talmud. Some of the pieces are medieval. From one generation to the next, no matter what circumstances we found ourselves living in, Jews made an effort to tell each other this story of leaving Egypt. A question to ponder, what do our ancestors say to us tonight about having a Seder in difficult circumstances? And in the future, when we are explaining what it was like to celebrate Passover and hold a Seder during this pandemic, what wisdom will we be able to pass on to future generations? We've come to the second cup. Uh, you can see I haven't drunk much of mine, but hopefully you've been enjoying yours. I'll add a symbolic sploosh. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Borei Now I need to do rachats, washing of hands before the meal. I'm going to go in the kitchen and uh, I need you to keep an eye on this afikomen because if I don't have it for tzafun at the end of the meal, I can't end the Seder. Okay, everybody. We have come to being able to take that first bite of matzah on page 17. <laughs> Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotza b'tzivanu alachilat matzah. Blessed are you, God, who brings forth bread from the earth, and blessed are you, God, sovereign of the universe, who commands us to eat matzah. Mm hmm. Now it's time for the bitter herbs. So I like to eat mine on the chazeret, on the lettuce. Um, the tradition in my household was <laughs> to have a competition with my older brother about who could eat the most, most maror. But he's not here, so I'm taking a wimpy amount. Baruch Adonai Elohim Melech Alham Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav etzivanu alachilat maror. Blessed are you, God, eternal ruler of the universe, who has made us holy with commandments and commands us to observe the eating of the bitter herb. Um, Gary Kahalnik, I really miss your maror this year. What can I say? Then we come to the Korach, the combining of the Haroset and the Maror. And my screen's gone dark, give me a moment. Good, the program's still running. Uh, for me this year, Korach combining the sweet Haroset with the bitter herb is to remind me that I cannot notice the sweet things in life without tasting the bitter. Now imagine I had a delicious meal 
Shulchan Aruch, the set table, and poof, we're back. Ah, that was a great fake Passover meal. But I do need to have safun. I do need to eat my afikomen, which I told y'all to keep an eye on, and it's not here. Hmm. Oh, what do you know? Here it is. Ah, thank goodness. You know, you need a prize. You need a prize if you find the Afikomen and save everyone from... Oh, thank you. Look, Afikomen prize, COVID-19, Seder 2020. All right, so take a bite of that delicious Afikomen. I think this might be last year's Afikomen. I'm not sure. All right. little bit dry. <laughs> the time has come to say grace after meals. Now I know this isn't the custom for many of you, so I will just sing one symbolic uh, verse of it um, because it's related to the third cup of wine. Whenever we have a festive meal for a special occasion like a wedding, a bar mitzvah, or the Seder, we pour a cup of wine during Birkat Hamazon as a way of elevating our thanking God for the meal. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hazan et haolam kulo betuvo, bechen bechesed uvracha amin, hu noten lechem lecho basar, Well, the time has come to welcome Elijah. So I'm going to open the door and sing Eliyahu Hanavi. Elijah visits every Seder because Elijah is the harbinger of the Messiah and brings to our Seder tables, no matter what our current situation, a message of hope and redemption. It's a Passover miracle! The wine is gone. Elijah has blessed our table. Oh, may this be a portent of good things to come. Well, finally, we can't end our Seder without saying next year in Jerusalem. L'shana haba'ab Yerushalayim. And this too is an expression of hope. It's the desire that next year things will be in a good place. I think that's an interesting question to ask. After this pandemic, how will we put things in a better place? Because the thing about saying next year in Jerusalem is it won't magically happen. You have to put some effort into it. You would have to buy an airline ticket and make reservations at a hotel or rent an Airbnb. 
And the same is true of putting our world back in order after this plague of COVID-19. So as we say to one another, the end of the Seder, next year in Jerusalem, take a minute to think what that means to you. Thank you for going through this slightly awkward, not completely professional, but very heartfelt Seder. I hope that it helped you feel joy and hope and community this year. I miss all of you and I can't wait until we're able to gather in person again. Lishana Habaa Yerushalayim. Next year, may we be in Jerusalem.